Hi everyone, can you hear me? Hi Alison. <laughs> Hi Charlotte. Hi Alison Morgan. I'm back after a long needed break from YouTube, Pinterest and crafting in general, only making cards when needed. Alison Morgan saying, well you're welcome Alison. Alison D saying a bit better this week, horrible cold flu these days you know, you don't know if it's the virus, oh no it's rubbish. Um, oh, there's loads and loads of comments here. You've all got on way before me today. Marcia, Alison D, my Q&A question is, are England going to win? <laughs> oh, who knows? <laughs> Alison Morgan, I've had my second COVID jab in two weeks ago. Best of luck to England, Marcia, saying, hi, Barbara, hope you're okay. Just here to say hello, as off to prepare for England victory party. Yeah, I've got to go. Literally, I can't be on here a lot past six tonight because Hannah and I are going out to my nephews. Um, great to get both jabs, Alison, saying, Hi, Thea, hope you're all okay. Uh, kick off eight. Yes, I believe so, Alison D. Starts at eight here in the UK. I think beers start shortly, Barbara's saying. <laughs> Oh, hi, Lai. Win or lose, we have done great so far with the football, but would be nice to win. One must be properly prepared for the game after all, Charlotte's saying. Alison's saying our questions are going to be funny if we've started on the football and the drink already. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, listen. Um, oh, hi, Denise. Hope you're okay. I'm going to have to, there's that many comments here, I'm going to have to skip through to the end. Um, I've just seen a comment about Woodhall Spa. Sunny all day but clouding over now in South Derbyshire, Thea's saying. Hi watching from Tattersall Lakes, Lincolnshire, having barbecue, waiting for football, makes a change from being at home in Leicester. That sounds lovely. Um, <clears throat> right, Alison Morgan saying loud and clear, that's fab, thank you. Uh, Charlotte saying yes, sorry I miss you showing my card. Right, where is it? What have I done with it? I had it on my desk, Alison. Hang on, let me see if I can find it. I've moved it now. can't find it now Alison. It was here on my desk. Um, I know it's in the back of my book but I don't know where I've put my book. Hang on. I think I've got it. It's here because I was going to put it up on my board behind me. So for anybody that doesn't no, um, the lovely Alison made me this card. Let me get rid of this and see if we can zoom in before we start. Okay, so the lovely Alison D made me this card ages ago and it's been sat on my desk to show everybody and I literally kept forgetting for weeks and months on end and then I think it was last week I showed it and she wasn't here. So she's put, thank you, Ashley. She's put me on the 50 inch TV. Thanks for your precious time. And then some lovely words inside. And then she's just put a note to say all the things that I've taught her. Bunting last year, offset on the scan and cut, shadow outline for words. And on the back, handmade by labels, DIY envelope. And I introduced her to grandma's um kitchen but i think it's grandma's garden the font from da font so um for anybody that missed it this is the card and i knew i'd put it somewhere i had it when i was writing down something the day and i put it in the back of the book um but i need to hang it up on my display thing um 
<laughs> Rachel, that picture was taken when makers came here the very first time to do the um, Facebook Live on the new SDX Disney machine. So she's taken it from there. Um, yes, it is a beautiful, beautiful and, and thoughtful, wasn't it, Charlotte? Of her, yeah. Right. Let's um, let's crack on. So, is it me? I can't hear you. Rachel's saying. Right. Can everybody else hear me? Okay. Oh no, I'm on the 50 inch TV tonight. <laughs> Vicky's saying, Rachel, it's you, because everybody else can hear me. Okay, so last week when we said, um, I was saying that I wasn't quite sure what to do and then the idea of doing a and a came up. So that's what we're gonna do tonight with a little bit of a few maintenance tips. Corrine saying can hear. Okay, fab. Um, so Heather, I don't know if Heather's on here, but Heather messaged me. Everyone's saying yes, here, just fine, I can hear. Lovely Alison, so kind. You did, Barbara, thank you. I've been so busy, I forgot to message. But yes, thank you very much for that, buying me the coffee on my website. That was lovely of you. And I know you do it regularly and you really don't need to, but thank you. Um, Karen's saying, I can remember that picture and the live you did with makers. Yes, can hear. Everyone's saying yes loud and clear. So, Rachel, I'm thinking maybe either refresh your page or go out and come back in again. Okay, so let's crack on because like I say, I've got to go out with Hannah. Um, can somebody keep a track on the time for me and let me know when it's um, six o'clock? Mandy's saying it sounds fine. Okay, so first of all, let me just start off by saying Heather messaged me the other day and said that she knew that I was going to be doing this kind of Q&A maintenance session. And she asked me if I would just talk in general about the mats and the blades and whether you need to have a specific mat for a specific job and whether you need to keep a specific blade for a specific job. Heather saying, yes, Heather. Oh, you're here, perfect, managed to make it. Right, brilliant. Okay, so this hopefully is gonna answer some of the questions that, that you raised in the um, email you sent me the other day, Heather. So, as I say, she was she was asking about mats and blades and whether you need specific mats and specific blades for specific jobs. That's a mouthful. Try saying that ten times fast. So, this is my take on it. Okay, um, you can do whatever you want, basically, but this is kind of what I'm just going to go over quickly before we go into anything else. So, your standard mat that you get with your scan and cut machine is the purple strap mat that you can see here and it says on it standard tack mat and then over on the this right hand side mine says it's the cdx cadx sorry ma which basically oh you can't even see that can you sorry let's try and bring it in so down here right at the bottom it tells me which mat mine is and um my mat is obviously for the dx or sdx machine if yours is a CM model machine, yours will probably say CM down here. But from memory, irrespective of whether you're using a DX machine or the SDX Disney machine like I have, or a CM machine, if it's got the purple strap on the bottom, it's the standard mat. And this is the mat in the main that you use for most things. So on this mat, with a regular blade, so whatever your blade holder is, so for me, on my DX, it's the black top blade. On the CM machines, it's the turquoise blade, isn't it, from memory? I think it's a turquoise housing. So they're the blade and the mat that go together, okay? And with this particular mat, you can basically cut more or less most things. The only thing I wouldn't cut with this mat is something like copy paper, tissue paper, or any very thin scrapbook paper. But apart from that, um, you know, regular cardstock, fabric with an iron on backing on it, vinyl, you name it, you can, 
you know, use this blade with your regular mat. Now, there's a kind of, what am I trying to say? There's a kind of like proviso to that, if you like. So if you're a card maker or a sewer, you've probably heard the saying, don't use your fabric scissors for cutting paper. And it's kind of a bit like that with your scan and cut. Now, me personally, if I've been cutting fabric with an iron on backing, so something like Heat and Bond Light or Heat and Bond Ultra, I have always in the past used my standard mat and my standard blade. But what you can do, you can still use whichever is your regular blade housing. So in, in the, you know, in my case, this, this black one, like I say, with the CM models, I think it, it's turquoise, isn't it? But you can take the blade out. So you know how your blades come in those little plastic cases? I used to keep all those. And on one in a Sharpie, I used to write blunt. And all my blunt blades I put in one of those and then I would keep those if I was cutting anything coarse. So maybe, you know, something like, um, well, coarse isn't the right word because I would never cut coarse glitter card because that will definitely dull or blunt your blade. But, you know, if I was cutting some kind of glitter card that is the glitter that wouldn't shed and wasn't very gritty, I would use a blunt blade so as not to damage my blade. So what you can do then, you can keep those little plastic casings and maybe buy just a blade, a regular standard blade, and write on the casing fabric and then keep that blade just for fabric. So then if you come in to use your standard mat and your standard blade holder and your cutting card, just use it as it is every day. If you're using your standard mat and you're cutting fabric with like heat and bond on the back, then I would take the blade out of the holder and get your separate fabric blade and put that in and cut your fabric. And that way you're kind of prolonging the life of your regular blade. So that's the first thing I would say. Now, you know, it's a case of like, do what I do and you know, do what I say and not what I do or the other way around. I don't necessarily always do that, but that is something to be mindful of. If you want to make your blades last longer, have a blade specifically for your regular everyday, you know, card and paper cutting and keep a separate blade in a separate holder marked fabric and just use that in this holder. So swap it out when you're going to cut fabric. Now, that leads me on to the next thing. How do you take the blade out? Um, I've just seen a question. Let me just go back. Here is a silly question. When I send a project from Canvas Workspace to my scan and cut, should I group everything before I send or send parts separately? I always need to alter or add to my initial project. If you group it in Canvas Workspace and then send it over to, the, to your Scan and Cut machine, you can't always ungroup it on your machine. So if it's something that you know you're not going to need to adjust or alter in any way, then I would say group it in Canvas Workspace and send it over to the machine. If you think that you, know, you may need to adjust the design for one reason or another once it gets into your machine, or if you've got different elements on your mat that you know you're gonna to need to cut separately, then don't group it in Canvas Workspace, Barbara, before you send it over. Vicky's saying, yes, turquoise blade housing on CM, brilliant, okay. Um, same with Vicky, I wouldn't group it as you can't ungroup on the scan and cut, that's what Rachel's saying, yeah. Um, Katie's saying hi from Washington. You can put everything on the same mat slash file, but not groups. Yeah, it, it depends what you're going to be doing. As I say, if it's something like an envelope or a box or something like that, that you know that you, you, you're not going to need to adjust, then group it and send it over. But if, if like, you know, we say in here, if you think that um, it's going to need to be adjusted one way or another, or if... Um, 
you know, you've got separate elements, like for instance, that candle card we did the other week where we had like elements for the card and elements for the decoration, then don't group those because once you send it over to the machine, you can't necessarily ungroup it. Right, so let's go back to the blade. Um, Barbara saying, okay. Hi Lynn, hope you're okay. <laughs> oh, it's okay Lynn, don't worry, that's fine. Right, so let's just go back to this um, before we, we go on with mats and um, whatever else. So for anybody that might be new, um, the way that you change your blade, so, and this, it doesn't matter whether the, it's an auto blade or whether it's um, a CM blade, they basically all open the same way. So you unscrew the bottom and you'll see your blade and you'll see this spring. Get your spatula that came with your machine, turn it over and in the back of the handle, you've got this little bit of sponge. Put your blade into that sponge and then lift your housing off and that, then gives you access to your blade, okay? So if you were changing this blade and you were gonna keep this maybe to use for something where you know, you, you're not gonna to want to use a brand new blade, that's how you change your blade. Put it in one of those little plastic cases. As I say, if it's an old blade, put, put blunt on it. Um, and then get your new blade out of the packet, pop your new blade in, to the sponge on the back of the spatula get your housing and put it in and then I just tip it up whoops tip it upside down and it's on a magnet so it will drop in okay and then all you need to do when you put this back on because of that spring you need to push this down and turn at the same time okay and then that just replaces the blade Barbara's saying, have to go on kitchen duty, we'll catch up later, that's fine. Okay, so that's just a little bit of a chat about what mat and what blade to use. Now, there are obviously other mats, so in a little while, I'm going to be using this mat. So this mat is your low tack adhesive mat, and this has got the turquoise strap on it. And this is for, as it says, anything low tack so if you were going to try and cut tissue paper or um, I'm going to attempt to uh, calibrate my machine in a little while and I'm going to be using a piece of copy paper so I'm going to use the low tack mat so this is your low tack mat that you would use as I say for anything other than what you're not going to use on your standard mat the exception to that is if you want to cut fabric there are again a couple of options so i'll talk about the cm model machines first of all so on the cm machine if you're cutting fabric with a heat and bond ironed on the back then i would use the standard mat the purple strap mat i would iron the heat and bond onto the back of the fabric remove the paper backing from the heat and bond and I've always cut mine with heat and bond side down to my standard mat and I've always used my standard blade or a blade that you've kept separate for fabric in your standard blade holder. But if you want to cut unbonded fabric and you want to use that high tack support uh, sheet that comes with your machine or you can buy separately, you'll quite often hear me say, apply your high tack support sheet to an old mat or to a low tack mat. And this is when I would use this. I would peel off the plastic, I would apply the high tack support sheet and keep this mat then, the turquoise mat, as a fabric mat and I'd write on it fabric so that you don't pick it up by mistake and you don't notice it's got that extra high tack sticky on it and go and put card on it and then you'll not get it off okay so that's that then if you've got a dx or sdx machine we now have the fabric map and this is the tan colored strap so they're all color coded so purple is your standard 
turquoise is your low tack and then this gold or tan is your fabric mat. To accompany this fabric mat, there's a fabric blade, okay? And you can see they go together. And this is what I now use in my SDX or this can be used with any auto blade machine. And this mat is for cutting fabric that is unbonded. So nothing ironed on the back at all. So fabric with nothing ironed on the back with an auto blade machine, use this car, this mat and this blade. Fabric with nothing ironed on the back using a CM model, apply your high tack support sheet to your low tack mat or an old standard mat and then designate that as fabric, okay? So I don't want to dwell too much on the different types of mats because I want to actually kind of get on with the maintenance element of this. So now, um, let's just see what we're saying. Vicky's saying, at Susan Dawn, I'm getting pauses in the video with spinning circle, but that's usually my connection. Okay, well, I'm watching it on my phone as well, Vicky, and it all looks okay to me, so I'm guessing um, <clears throat> it is maybe just, you know, your individual connection. And Maria's saying, sound fine here. So, um, Suzanne, maybe go out and come back in again, something like that. Right, let's get on to this. So maintenance, one thing I would say whenever you um, are storing your mats, always keep the clear plastic protective cover on them. It keeps dust off them. It keeps, you know, if you've got pets, hairs and things like that off them. So once you finish cutting, always put your plastic sheet back on. Now, another tip that I will give you, and I don't know how I'm trying to bring this into the camera. This is my plastic sheet here. And in Sharpie, I've written top. So I know that whenever I put this plastic sheet back on, I need to be able to read the word top. So if this is... Let me bring this in this way round and the wrong way round. I know that I've got the clear plastic on the wrong way round. And the reason that I do that is so that if... Sorry, I'm trying to get this in. You can't really see it, can you? It says there, top in Sharpie. And the reason that I do this is because obviously when you store these in your house, this will pick up dust, just everyday dust in your house. And if you take this off and then put this the wrong way down, you're just transferring dust off this plastic onto your sticky mat. So if you get into the habit of always marking it, and then usually because this underside is stuck to your mat, this isn't necessarily going to get dusty or it's not going to be off your mat long enough to get dusty. So that's my first tip. Um, so Heather's saying that was great, really helpful. Right, so I'm going to take this plastic cover off my mat. And I'm just going to turn my mat sideways. I don't know if I can adjust the height of the camera now without making you all sick. Just hang on a second and let me see if I can just move this up just to give us. My arm's going to be in the way now, but just to give us a little bit more height, maybe. So... I've purposely not cleaned this mat this week. I have used it a couple of times. I've not used it a massive amount this week, but I have used it. Let's see if I can get that back in now. Now I've just took the camera up a little bit. So if your mat is particularly grubby and, you know, in a really bad state, you can get things like, um, I think maybe in the States it's called glue. Is it glue gone? Um, I've used WD-40 in the past. Crafters Companion sell something called Stick Away, which I've used on mats in the past. So basically what I would do, if your mat is particularly bad, I would get some kind of sticky stuff remover. And, <coughs> excuse me. I would mask off around your mat where the ruler is so that you're isolating 
just the cut area of your mat and then whichever glue remover you're using do it in sections so your mat is you know clearly divided I'm trying to bring this in it's not sorry it's not a very very good but you know your, your mat is clearly divided into four six by six sections and I would concentrate on one section at a time put whatever sticky stuff remover you're using um, in the past when I've used the crafters companion stick away I've, I've sprayed the area I've let it sit and then I've got you know like an old um, I've got a couple of these here this is an old what's this called pampered chef this is my old puzzle scraper or an old bank card or store card something like that let the glue remover sit and then scrape it and it will bring it will go black and hideous and gunky and horrible and then when you've got it all loose wipe it away with a baby wipe and then I would do each element so each segment of your mat one at a time and that will you know get rid of all the rubbish if your mat is not particularly bad like my mat here then I would use baby wipes and this is what I use on a regular basis now I use the Huggies um, pure extra care the 99% water no perfume the reason that I use these let me just get them out of the pocket sorry about the noise the reason I use these is they're very thick some of the cheaper ones are quite thin and when you start cleaning your mat or your machine because I use these to clean my machine as well they start to like fluff up and you don't kind of want to transfer that fluff onto your mat or even onto your machine so Vicky's saying I put my name on the plastic cover sheet so dual purpose in the days when we could pack our machines and go to classes yeah anything just so you can identify that it goes back down in that direction basically and Vicky's saying goo gone it's an orange liquid yeah I've seen people use that so wherever you are in the world glue gone if you're in the UK crafters companion sell a spray I think it might be in a purple can or blue can maybe and it's called stick away and as I say I've even used WD-40 in the past so if you you know you've got a can of that handy and you if you're worried just try it on a small section of your mat spray it on let it sit but again like I say I would mask off the ruler area because obviously this this area is what goes into your machine on your rollers and you don't want the, to risk the the you know the chance that you might get some WD-40 or some kind of glue gone left over on here and then send this into your machine so mask it off thoroughly just so you're left with the bit in the middle Alison saying I used a wet butter knife scraped away from me let it dry then use pin flare looks brand new see so you know everyone's got their own kind of system I'm just giving you you know things that I've done in the past right baby wipes I do exactly the same as I've told you to you know with the, with the glue glue gone or stick away I do my mat section at a time now I don't mask off when I'm using the baby wipes because it does help to clean everything but I wouldn't put a solution if you like or a solvent on here and again I do the same thing so I get my wipe and I do an area at a time so I'm just going to do this and I literally just go up and down and you can see I'm not sure how well you'll see but you see all the little black dirty bits coming off and then I find another a clean section and I go the opposite way okay and then I move on to the next area and usually um, one wipe is sufficient if your mat isn't particularly bad if it's really grubby then you might need a couple of wipes but this is literally what I do before I restick. so again just going in sections and if there's any bits of paper left on your mat that you've not got up with your scraper these wipes will pick them all up so 
That's all I do. I just go backwards and forwards in both directions. And when I've done that, I then just go over and round the edge of the mat and just pick up any debris that's can you see that? I'm not sure how well you'll see it if it'll focus. Then what you can also do is turn your mat over. I'm not going to put this face down at the moment because it's it's wet and although I did wipe my desk yesterday just in case there's any bits of dust I don't want to put them on here. So I'm just going to wait for it to, to dry for a second or two and then what I will do I'll bring in my plastic this is the side that normally goes on the mat and then I'm just going to turn it over just put my mat on that for now and then I wipe the back as well because sometimes you know when people say they can't get their mat to go into the machine it won't roll in properly sometimes it can be that you've got um, I'm not sure how well you'll see this, but there's a dark section here and it's that underside of your mat. And sometimes you can get bits of debris and bits of, you know, gunk and things on there. So I always do the back as well. And then let it dry before um, you use it. Okay, so that's the mat. And then this is my plastic cover now. So, re-sticking your mat. I'm going to try and turn it round this way, just in the hope that you can see maybe a little better. So, re-sticking the mat. So, once you've got all the old debris and glue or rubbish off it, if you clean your mat on a regular basis, you shouldn't necessarily have to use the glue gun, glue gun or the stick away if you keep on top of it on a regular basis it's generally only if you just keep re-sticking and re-sticking and re-sticking and not properly cleaning in between that you have to kind of strip it back you can also put them in the sink with some soapy water and get a bit of a scrubbing brush on them then rinse it off and again leave it to dry before you put the cover back on it so re-sticking so as you know in the past for years i used the zig two-way glue pen and I've probably used this as long as I've had some form of an electronic cutting machine so you know literally years and years when I first had my craft robo and it only had mats that fitted A4 I used to re-stick my mats with one of those Xyron creative stations you know the big ones and you I used to put mask off around the edge and put the whole mat through and wind it through and put the dry adhesive on it then when I went to a puzzles machine and I had a 12 by 12 mat, I had to find an alternative and that's when I started using the Zig. So I've probably used this on and off for somewhere between 10 and 15 years. And I just buy the one with the, let me just um, take the lid off, hang on. I buy the one with the jumbo tip and it's, it's white when it arrives and you, oops, excuse me, you pump it down to activate it and this tip turns blue. And then you just apply a tiny little bit again in the segments of your mat. You don't need to do it all over. It will make it too sticky. Just a tiny little bit in each segment. Let it dry. It goes on blue. Let it dry clear. And then once it's clear, it's dry and you can put the plastic sheet back on. However, this year I've been using the stencil glue. And this is by Pin Flare, and it's a temporary stick stencil glue. And quite a few people use this now. So this mat's now dry. So this is how I will um, will do mine. Again, do it in sections. So you've got your four quadrants. I'm going to take the lid off this. It's got a very, very, very fine nozzle. I'm not sure how. Let me see. Can you see this? Put my hand in. I don't know if it'll focus. It's got a really fine nozzle. Um, Corrine's saying, sorry, miss the wipes. Can you show again? Yes, Corrine, hang on. It's the Huggies. Huggies Pure Extra Care, 99% water. And I just pick them up in my normal weekly shop. So, you know, um, 
when I go shopping if I need them. Any supermarket normally has these. And I'm not sure how well you'll see it, but they are quite thick. Um, some of the cheaper ones, like I say, are, are, are thin and flimsy. So I'm just going to leave that one on one side for now while we just press on with this for now. So won't that take the glue off also? No, it doesn't. It just takes any of the debris that's sat on top of the glue off. And then if I put my hand on this now, can you see my fingers? It's reactivated the glue that's there. So it doesn't remove the glue. The only way you can physically remove the glue is to use something that will take the glue away. So this probably wouldn't need re-sticking now this mat um, because as I say once you reactivate it with with the wipes um, look I can pick the mat the whole mat up now with my fingers um, but I am going to just lightly re-stick it just to show you so Rachel's saying sorry I have to go we'll catch up later take care come on England yeah take care Rachel um, I use the Zig, Maria's saying, thank you, they are the ones I use. Okay, brilliant. So with regards to this, the way I would do this is I just shake it down to get the glue coming towards the nib and then I would literally just apply a very, very thin bead. Now I'll see if I can pick it up and see if I can get it nearer so you can see. Can you see that literally? Let me try and hold it and point it out at the same time. Can you see here? That's all I would do. And then I keep one of these little old makeup sponges. Normally I wet it under the tap and then squeeze it out, but I forgot to wet it. But basically I just then drag the glue around. in that square again keeping well away from the rulers so I don't go right up to the sorry let me bring this in I don't go right up to the black lines I kind of keep about half an inch away either side and literally just drag this down doesn't matter obviously if you go over this line here into the next section but keep away from your rulers because again you don't want to get any sticky on those because they what are what roll through your machine and again I would do exactly the same with the sticking as I did with the cleaning so I would do a section at a time again wait for this to dry thoroughly before you then put your plastic sheet back on it and then I just keep my sponge and my adhesive in one of these little clear zip lock bags and then that way it's not going to you know get stuck to anything else so that's the mat now you can do that with any mat but obviously if you're going to do it on your low tack mat you're going to have to be really careful because the whole idea of having a low tack mat is like we said at, at the beginning to use something like tissue paper or or copy paper or thin paper so you don't want to make a low tack mat really 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 sticky and then go and put paper on it because you're just going to ruin that mat so the low tack mats I tend not to re-stick I tend to just clean to be fair I don't use my low tack mat very often so I literally just clean it with the baby wipes make sure it's dry put the plastic cover on it and then when I think it's finally given up and can't be used anymore I buy another one but my standard mat, so the purple strap mat, are the ones that I do re-stick. Um, Alison's saying, I use a damp sponge cut up to make the glue go further and leave it to dry. Yeah, that's exactly what I do, Alison, but I forgot to, to uh, dampen it before I started. Uh, I have to go now. We'll try and watch the rest later. Thanks, Ashley. That's okay, Vicky. So that's the mat sticking okay so then let me just put this mat on one side out of the way so now let's go to the machine
Okay, so again now, the machine, hopefully you should be able to see this. Again, I would use the wet wipe. Um, I don't spray my machine with any chemicals or anything like that. I literally only use the baby wipe and I just do exactly the same. So I wipe the screen, I wipe all around the outside and then let me bring this down. And then again with the wipe, I slide it underneath the roller and I just wipe the bed of the machine. And then just under here and the little rubber ends and just keep it all nice and dust free. And that's literally all I do. Okay, then as for blades, just to go back to blades, in my machine I keep, let's come back, this is a piece of um, kitchen foil, aluminium foil, silver foil, whatever you want to call it, literally, um, you know, the one that's about 12 or 14 inches uh, long, about 12 inches worth ripped off, screwed up as tight as I possibly can into this ball. I can't squeeze it any tighter, it won't go any smaller. Now there are different, um, different people say different things about this. Some people say that this can sharpen your blade and other people say it doesn't sharpen your blade. What it does do is remove any gunk or debris off your blade. So I suppose it kind of cleans your blade some people say it sharpens your blade, but again, it's the same thing. So if you bring in your spatula, undo your blade housing, take your blade off, and then obviously hold this end, not the sharp end. And then I literally just stab it into the silver foil and I just turn it over and find, you know, any bits I've not got holes in from previously and that's all I do then I put it back in the holder and then pop this back on which I'm trying to do and I can't see what I'm doing take that off and put it back on right let's see what else we're saying um Alison D saying this is great doing the maintenance need to protect our investment definitely yeah Alison Morgan saying she uses glasses wipes for the screens. That's a good idea, yeah. Underneath, how do we clean the scanner? Just a wet wipe, yeah. I would, um, let me see if I can just flip you back. I'm just going to turn, hang on. So I'm just going to turn the machine off. Let me put all my bits and pieces away. I'm going to put the screen down and then I'm going to unplug it from the back. So I've turned it off and I'm just going to unplug the cable. Not sure how well you're going to see this. Okay. Turn it upside down or on its side. Let me see if I can bring this down. And then you've got your I can't even see where mine is now. Hang on. Turn it right over. Hang on, I can't even get into mine. That's my tray. 
Ah, oh, there it is. Hang on. I can't see what I'm doing. Just hang on a second. So that's a tray. I can't even get in tonight. How'd you get into it, guys? On my CM900, it used to pop out really easily. Well, I can't even see how to get into mine and without messing about. But yeah, open it up, just use a wipe and then I would use a kitchen roll and or um, a lint-free cloth or a microfiber cloth would be good. Um, and I can't even see how to get into mine, so. 5.45 warning. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I've been wanting to do it myself for some time, but just didn't dare. Always oh, sounded so easy, but I was so afraid I will put the big girl pants on and do it now. Alison, yes, I only use baby wipes, glasses cleaner or Dettol wipes on mine. Um, my alarm has gone off. Sorry. Put you through so much trouble. It's fine. Definitely on the CM900, I know mine used to just pop out really easily. But to be fair, I've never ever touched the underside of my SDX. So when I work out how to do it, I'll maybe post something separately. So let me just plug this. Let me turn it back over and let me plug it back in. switch it back on okay so um, okay we're, we're back on so let's open this up Right, so the next thing was um, cutting alignment. So you know sometimes when you're using your machine to do um, like direct cuts, it might not necessarily cut evenly all the way round. And that's um, what they call like a, a calibration. So the way to do that is just making sure that you're all caught up. Let me, I just need my screen thing again and I just need just let me grab my wipe again for a minute because now I've tipped it upside down I've got all bits in there that I need to wipe away okay so I'm just going to put my blade back in and then I know where that is put all the bits and pieces away so if you go into the wrench on your machine now on your cm machine it's on the front of your machine on your auto blade machine it's actually on the screen um, so if you go in here and you just work your way through the pages what you're looking for is scanning slash cutting position adjustment you touch the arrow next to it it tells you the carriage and the mat will move to the initial position to keep your hands away. You need to say OK. And then it says to you, install the blade holder and a mat with a sheet of white paper attached. So because I've just put some adhesive on that regular mat, I'm going to use my low tack mat. And I'm going to apply a piece of copy paper to just move all the wipes and things out of the way. So let's come back here. So this is my low tack mat. You can see it's got the turquoise arrow on it. And I'm going to just put a piece of copy paper in the top left hand corner. Need to make some space so you can see. Okay. 
So just positioning this piece of copy paper on my low tack mat. I'm going to go back to the machine and hopefully load this mat in. And I've just remembered that the last time I used this mat, I did have a loading issue, so I might not be able to do this. Let me just see, because I might need a new mat. Let me just see if it will work, but if not, I'll walk, I'll just talk you through it. Okay, so that one has gone through okay. So, it says, install the blade holder and a mat with a sheet of white paper attached into the machine. Shift the scanner lever to position one. So if you've got an auto blade machine, you will have the, the scanner lever on the left hand side. You just make sure it's in position one, which is the bottom position, okay? Then it says, after the machine is, is set up, press start. So as me saying, pull out the back tray completely while upright. Okay, I'll do that. I won't have time to do it tonight, but yeah. So like I say, I've never touched the underside of my SDX machine at all. But yeah, thanks for that. So on the CM model, it didn't have that tray, did it? And you could literally just access the window really easily. So I'm not sure if you can see what's happening here now. So I've loaded the mat. And it's it's put two little splits in the paper it's actually cut my paper but should be okay then you have to wait for the screen oh it's saying cannot recognize the cutting line change the sheet of white paper and try again I think it's because it's cut it so I'm going to try it again and see but basically you need to line up this piece of paper. Let's give it one more try. I'm going to say OK and let's see if we can do it again and start. But what should happen here is once it puts the two little splits in the paper it will show up on the screen with a little dot and you have to tell the machine whether the dot is in the middle on the left and right position. If it's in position on one and not on the other, you say no, it's not correct. And you keep doing it until the dots line up with the splits that it puts in the paper. Now it's put the split in one side of the paper but it's ripped my other one. So hopefully, let's see if this one works. It's done it again, it's ripping in this corner, so it might not recognise it. And I think that's why it's dragging the mat back through. I might need to use a piece of card rather than paper. Yeah, it's telling me it can't recognise it, but basically what it will do... Let me see, you're not even going to be able to see it because it's, it's barely visible, but basically what it does on your paper it puts a cross, a split here and a split here, left and right. And once it's recognised, it's ripping mine in this corner. I don't know if, there's, if this low tap mat isn't sticky enough in this corner and that's why it's cutting it, but it's ripping it. So that's why it won't recognise. But basically once it does that, it will come up and it will show you the two, cro the two cross lines and it will have little dots. I think they're red. And it says to you, are the dots lined up with the centre of the cut line, yes or no. If they both lined up exactly centre, you say yes, and then that's, that's your machine um, aligned. If one of them isn't, you say no. Let me just see if I can find a piece of card quickly and let's just see if we can do it with my regular mat and see if we can get this to work. So I'm going to unload that one. So 
always when you're in a rush isn't it that things don't work so i'm just going to put a piece of card on my standard mat and let's just see if we can get this to to work before i have to go so i'm just going to hit the home button and i'll go back okay so i'm going to load my regular mat now Let's see if we can get this to work. So I'm going to go back to scanning position. It's five to six, Ashley. Okay, thank you. That's fine. Um, I'm going to say, okay. Now it's unloaded my mat. Okay, so I'm going to press start and let's see if this one works. And if this doesn't work this time, we'll have to do it another time. Just letting you know it's nearly six, that's fine. Okay, I've got a few extra minutes, but I just wanted to know when it was like near, near six. Right, so let's wait for this to process and see if this one will work. Same processing, but I don't know whether it's going to do anything. So we'll just have to wait for a minute. Okay, here we go. It's worked this time. So let me find my spatula. Now I'm, I'm going to have to literally bring this screen right in towards me. So basically, let's see if we can move you down and see. It's put a cup here and a cup here. Okay, so one in the right hand and one in the left. And what you have to do is you have to look at your screen and see whether there's a, a red circle with a red dot in the middle. And you have to tell the machine whether that red dot is in the middle of where those cut lines are vertically and horizontally. Now on this machine, the, from the angle I'm looking at it, the one on the left looks as though it's dead centre, but the one on the right looks as though it's off. So it's saying, does the red centre of the circle align with the centre of the cut? So the answer is no, because they both don't line up. So I'm going to say no. Then it says, change the white paper and then try again. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to flip the paper around and put it back in the corner where it was. Rub it down and say, OK. And then it says, start. So it's going to take it through again and it's going to put the cuts in the mat, it, in the card that's on the mat again. So it's processing. I'm just going to put my plastic sheet on my low tack mat while it's doing that. Um, Heather, you don't need to put paper in, you can put card in, it's just that I generally use copy paper, but obviously it wasn't working for me tonight, but in the past when I've done this, I've always used copy paper, so that's why I've changed to card. Okay, so let's come back. So it's put the splits in again in the paper the cuts in and it's saying does the red center line up so again it looks as though it's lining up on the left but it's 
ever so slightly off on the right. So I'm going to say no and OK. And it's going to ask me to do the same process again. So what I'm going to have to do is take this piece of card off and I'm just going to put it in my paper trimmer and trim this off so I've got a clean edge again with no cuts in it. So just give me a minute while I do this and just trim. So that's all I've done. I've just literally cut this off. So this is a fresh piece of card now back up in the top left hand corner. Just make sure that you put your card in in the same place every time. And then I'm just going to say start and let it go through again. So I'm just tidying up as I go so that when this is finished, I'll be able to just end the live and I'll be ready to go off and go and get changed and get ready to go out with Hannah. While we're waiting for that to process I've gone over the different types of mats and whether you need to keep a separate blade for the different mats I've gone over cleaning your mat re-sticking your mat just generally kind of keeping your, your, your machine clean and then now hopefully aligning so let's just move this back in and now it looks as though that dot is right in the middle so this time I'm going to say, yes, that's okay. And it says the setting was saved. So now I can just go back and I can say, okay. And that's my machine um, cutting calibrated. So the next time I go to stamp something and want to do say a direct cut or I want to cut something with an offset around it, it should give me a nice even offset border all the way round, okay? Um, so I think for, for now, unless if, if anyone's got any quick questions, um, so let's just see what we're saying. So Alison's saying, so if you were to cut something with an offset around it, it will be correct all the way around. It should be Alison, that's what the scanning slash cutting alignment is all about. It's effectively making sure that you get an even distribution of an offset, if you like, yeah, around whatever you're cutting. So Linda Lee is saying, six o'clock, Ashley, thank you for these demos and session. Thank you, Ashley, for the live, enjoying the evening. Heather's saying, thanks so much, Ashley, thumbs up, brilliant. Um, so like I say, I know it's a bit kind of rushed tonight, um, but it's just because I've not got a lot of time. We can always go over it again, you know, in um, you know, the normal weekly session. If anyone's got any questions, you can always ask questions every week, even if it's, you know, not on what we're, we're doing. But it was just um, really, you know, to try and just do, like I say, a quick Q&A session and a bit of a maintenance and a few hints and tips along the way. I'll probably remember loads of other things that I wanted to say. And if I do, then we'll, you know, I'll have to try and make a note of them and go over them again. But for now, let's see. Thanks, Ashley. That was great. Not here next week, but back the week after Thea saying, OK, Thea, take care. Uh, Katie saying, thank you. Alison saying, thank you so much. You're awesome. You're welcome. So I'm going to unload this mat, take this piece of card off it now because I don't need it. I'm going to bring my mat back in. Try and find my plastic cover. Put this back on my mat. So Marie is saying, by all, stay safe. Um, Sean's saying, sorry, Ashley, missed all this. Tennis will, will, will it go? Yes, it will. It's recording. You might have to wait, Sean, for it to render up, and but then you'll be able to watch it and it'll be in the live playlist. 
I'm just going to go over the top on there. Um, enjoy your evening, everyone. Good luck, England. Don't forget to like everyone. Alison's saying and Caroline's giving it a thumbs up. So that's it. Right, so I think that's it. I'm going to turn the machine off, put all my bits and pieces away. Didn't get to cleaning the scanner window, but we now know on the DX machine you've got to pull that tray all the way out and that gives you access to the scanning window. As I say, I've not, not touched the underneath of mine at all, but... Um, on the CM model, it's readily visible when you turn your machine over. Just make sure you've got your machine turned off and make sure you've unplugged it at the back from the cable before you do anything and lay your screen down so that you're not turning your machine over with your screen sat up, okay? Um, so I'm going to cover... Oh, and try and keep your machine covered up. I obviously, you know, made the dust cover for mine and the... I just keep my dust cover over my machine at all times when it's not in use. So the, the, the better you can keep the dust off it or dust from getting in it, the better it will be all round and the same with your mats. Okay, so I think I can't see any questions or anything popping up. Um, so as I say, I know it's been a bit of a rush tonight, but I am going to say goodbye. Take care, everybody. Um, if you're watching the match, I hope we all get the result that we want. And I will hopefully see you all 